Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the most frequently asked questions about Mexico. Um, now, again, I cover Merida, Mexico. I live out here in the Yucatan Peninsula, in the state of the Yucatan, in the city of Merida, Mexico. And as you guys already know, um, that's you know what we cover a lot here on this channel. But in today's episode, um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about, you know, can actually be used for all of Mexico. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm just gonna shoot through all the questions that I'm probably gonna be talking about and then we'll go um, in detail, all right? So we're gonna be talking about, is it safe? We're gonna, talk, we're gonna be talking about how to make money. We're gonna be talking about banking, drugs. We're gonna be talking about, you know, do I need to learn Spanish? You know, th things like dating, you know, uh, post office, medicine you know all kinds of things you know it's safe to, to drive out here and then so many other things so without further ado let's start going through the questions all right so the first question i have here is it's oh, by the way before i get into the questions um most of these things i've covered in explicit detail in separate episodes so a lot of these questions i've already i have already answered okay and I've made actual full episodes on them. The ones I have not answered in full, um, I will be making future episodes, okay, about these topics and, you know, cover them even more in detail. But I figured, you know what, let me make a quick video talking about just certain things, you know, something that most people can use, like a little bit of, uh, um, of a guide, you know, a knowledge guide, you know, to help them, uh, you know, with um, Mexico. For instance, I know a lot of you guys watching this are foreigners, you know, and, uh, you know, just like we have these for every country, right? The do's and don'ts and, and all that stuff. So, all right, number one, is it safe? Yeah, you know, most of Mexico is actually pretty safe. I happen to live in the safest area in all of Mexico, all right? So, just want to give a little shout out to that. So, that's where I live, okay, in Medina. Medina, Mexico is the safest city in all of the Americas. The only other safest city is, I think, Ontario or Ottawa or somewhere in Canada. That's it. Everywhere, I mean, Manila is the second safest city in all of the Americas. That's all the way from Alaska all the way down to Argentina, all right? So you, again, first, second, who's really counting, all right? So Manila is extremely safe. Now, the rest of Mexico, sure, Mexico might get like a little bit of a bad uh, rap, but the reality is, is that Mexico is actually extremely safe. If you keep your nose out of you know, a trouble, you know, if you are literally, as long as you are out here doing, you know, regular things, you know, regular touristy things, regular citizen stuff, you know, just regular stuff, and you're keeping your nose out of trouble, all right, then you're fine. I mean, you know what I mean by this. I'm not going to go too detailed into it. You know exactly what I mean. It's just like if you're in the United States, all right, you know, Baltimore has, you know, it's very, you know, uh, scary and very dangerous. Uh, Chicago, LA, Miami, but if you, you know, my, all these cities have a dark side and a, and a good side, okay? And you guys know extreme, very well that when you visit Chicago, when you visit Baltimore, when you visit Miami, when you visit LA, you're always staying in the good side, okay? Even when you live there, all right? So um, now these, all, these cities, just like cities out here in uh, Mexico and areas in Mexico, you know, again, you know what I mean? There are, there are dangerous areas, just like any other part of the world. You know what I mean? It has, uh, obviously, it has to do, you know, um, in this case out here, you know, because of the cartels and the drugs and the violence and yada, yada, yada. We can talk about that more in detail. And we do, not just in this channel, but on my other channel. Uh, shout out to, to that, you know what I mean? You know, if you guys want to check that out. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, no. I mean, it's actually pretty safe out here. It's really safe really safe and especially if you come from the united states of america if you're coming from the usa mexico's safer all right just that's it flat out now if you're coming from another part of the world where things are actually pretty you know tame and safe and boring then yeah mexico could be a little bit you know a more of an adventure all right but again if you're coming from the u.s look guys we're the fucking danger out here all right don't get it twisted all right moving on next question how to make money I get asked this all the freaking time, and I answer it all the time, but it just seems that people just don't really get it, so I gotta keep you know, answering it. People ask me, how do I make money, or how you, how they can make money out here? Look guys, simply, simply put, get a job. Now, you are in another country, so it's going to be very hard for you to work at a regular job out here, and especially not only do you not know the language, but you're going to be getting paid the local wage, which is not enough. 
Okay, if you're coming from a first world country, whatever the fuck they pay out here is not enough. Unless in your original country, in your country of origin, again, you're in Europe, Australia, the US, Canada, if you're out there, and you somehow get a international corporate type job out here, then yeah, you'll be getting paid money. That's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of people, okay? And those people are working 80 hours a week and doing all that stuff and it really doesn't matter because that's, they're not watching this video, okay? Now, for everyone else, which is everyone else watching this right now, how can you get a job? Again, listen, you might have to go a little bit out of your comfort zone, but there are tons of jobs out there. If you are into tech, and I'm just gonna give you off the top of my head, if you're into tech, check out all the Bitcoin, blockchain, all that world. Check that world out, okay? That world of tech is only beginning, okay? I don't wanna say learn to code, but learn to code, okay? And especially if that's your realm. If that's not your realm, like a lot of people, me included, Guess what? You can work for anyone out there. You can either A, teach English. You can teach English to Chinese kids. You can teach uh, English to other people around the world that are willing to pay top dollar, okay? Now, you, it's, it's not like you're just gonna go out there, hey, I'm gonna teach English. No, 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 no. You gotta go and find English, you gotta find companies, okay, that are English, uh, teachers, okay, they, so basically you work for a company, that company puts you with the client and you get paid like 15 bucks an hour, which again, 15 bucks an hour in the US is eh, out here, you're making a lot of money, a lot of money, okay, so again, if you're out here in Mexico and you're making 15 bucks an hour, you're sitting, it's like you might as well be making 45 bucks an hour in the US, okay, that's the equivalent, so you can teach English and there's many realms in which you can explore that. But again, you gotta do your research. You gotta go on Google or some sort of, uh, I don't know, internet and just type in, just like you're typing in, like moving to Mexico or Mexico info and I pop up, guess what? If you actually type, how do I teach English online? You're gonna get all kinds of information. You might even get a bunch of videos and, and, and even more resources than you could have ever dreamed of. So you could teach English. Another thing you could do, especially if you're an American coming from the US, and especially now more than ever with everything that's going on, you can work remotely. What do I mean? You go online, all right, and you go, example, go to uhaul.com, see what kind of jobs they got. And when you look at the job offerings, you might be able to see, I mean, you might be able to land a job, okay, that allows you to work from home, from your desk, okay, and, and all you gotta do is answer customer service calls. All, and again, all you gotta do is um, maybe set up appointments. You know, maybe you're calling U-Haul, or you as a customer call U-Haul in order to reserve a, a truck. Well, that would be the job that you have. You are the person that answers the call and sets up the appointment so that they can go pick up the truck in their local area. Okay, so this is one example, okay? And again, um, this is something that I would talk about many times before, um, but now more than ever, since most jobs are gonna be of, of this caliber where you're gonna have to work remotely. In fact, it's, it's favored, it's, uh, it's better, you know what I mean? And so again, what do you do when you're out here? You get a VPN. Okay, what is a VPN? It is a, it just download that, you know what? You look it up, okay? But a VPN is basically just a, a piece of software that you download and you put on your computer and it allows you to mask your address. So when you are in Mexico, your computer is gonna tell the world, hey, I'm in Mexico. So when you're working for an American company or doing something like that, they might not like that for whatever reason, okay? Which again, it's, it's totally legal. You can work abroad. I mean, again, I don't wanna get into the details on that, but it's totally normal. But again, just for the companies, yada, 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 you know what I mean? So what you do is that you literally just get a VPN, okay? And through that VPN, you automatically now connect to the US, and once you're connected to the US and you're working for U-Haul, working for, you know, again, any one of these corporations or companies, you know, in which you're, you know what I mean, doing whatever, um, they, it, it will show to them that you are in the US and vice versa and boom, you can do your job. Again, maybe now this is a moot point and they're not even gonna give a crap about that. You can be out of fucking Zimbabwe, you know what I mean, as long as you get the job done. And why are they looking for Americans to work at customer service at U-Haul. Because again, if you're, an if you're an American citizen and you rent the U-Haul, for example, and you need actual help, they want an actual American that knows America to help the other American with the whole U-Haul thing. If they outsource something like that, 
it's definitely not going to go well because how the hell is an Indian going to know uh, from India, okay, or any other outsourced area? You know I mean, how are they going to know all the intricacies of what you know America is? You know, the the process of uh, you know the talking and the rental and, and the area and the highway and like just so many little things like that that only you are going to know. And again, this goes to a Canadian, European, and shit like that. You can also do the same thing with your own country and your own type of. Uh, work situation okay so like i said i already gave you like three examples okay number one or well, actually four examples i'm gonna give you okay um because the last example was entrepreneur become an entrepreneur like me so basically out here you can become an entrepreneur and work for yourself and be your own boss and it's not really a big deal or problem because you know out here in the u.s or in, in your first world country is going to be so expensive to really be an entrepreneur. I don't wanna get into details. Most, any small business owner already knows how difficult it is. Out here, you can be a small business owner. You can have your own little company. You can do so many things and really make it because out here, you don't need that much money to make it. So it allows you more time to dedicate to your art, to dedicate to your business, to dedicate to your um, whatever you're doing. Gizmo, relax. <laughs> um, okay, so you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, again, you got four things you get to choose from here. Option number one, teach English. Figure that out. Number two, get a job online for any corporation out there. You know, any kind of, okay, mega corporation, you can basically just get a job and work remotely. Number three, become an entrepreneur, okay? As an entrepreneur, you know, again, you know, you can make your own hours you can make your own uh, everything okay um, i'm an entrepreneur that's what i do okay and, and for any one of you guys has been following me since i moved out here to mexico you guys already know um, all the things that i do okay everything from video editing from consulting um to you know what i mean to all the things that i do out here now you know helping people move abroad and helping people you know come and live out here you know for example so i i am an entrepreneur i do a bunch of things you can do something very similar and, and again the last thing you can, and by the entrepreneur thing, again, you can come to another country, just like many people come to our countries to set up a business and set up a whatever. Well, it's the same thing. You guys can come out here to this country or other countries and set up a business, okay? Now, obviously, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated, but again, it depends on what it is you wanna do. It might be the most simplest thing in the world, okay? So again, you can, start your business abroad, whatever it is, okay? It could be selling ice cream for crying out loud, all right? And the last thing is working out here, okay? Getting a job and working out here. But that is not recommended because again, we've already talked about the wages are extremely low, okay? So again, your best option. Hey guys, sorry about that. As I got rudely interrupted by the noise, in fact, that's another thing about out here. I, had, I didn't have this on my list, but I, I feel like I have to share this with you guys because the noise can be a bit much for a lot of you guys. Now, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. I am Cuban. I'm loud. So being out here isn't a big deal. Um, it's actually pretty quiet for me, but for most, for a lot of people, not so quiet. Okay. Again, depending on where you're from, if you come from a noisy place, this is maybe not so noisy. If you come from a regular to non-noisy place, there's a lot of non-noisy places out there. Um, yeah, Mexico could be a bit much because um, again, it's all about that freedom and liberty that a lot of people have out here. So um, at, at any given time, you know, you're gonna not only have dogs barking, you're gonna have people honking their horns, you know, selling things. You're gonna have people blaring music, blaring, uh, you know, megaphones, you know, to sell you things. And I can go on and on. In fact, I'm sure most of you guys already know. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I gotta do out here is gotta figure out a little bit more of the sound issue and soundproof, you know, my situation and just figure it out to, you know, make it easier for me to make these videos because sound is a very important aspect to all this. And, uh, you know, for someone like me, it might be a little difficult. It can still, still doable, but it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, but anyways, I digress, the noise. You know, for some, it could be a bit much, but for others, not so much, you know what I mean? So the noise, you know, that's not necessarily a question, but that's something that does come up and needs to be talked about. Another thing that needs uh, to be talked about, um, we're gonna start going through a bunch of things real quick. Um, first off, toilet paper, you know what I mean? A lot of you guys have no idea, but basically, um, if you come from the US, you dump toilet paper down the toilet. In Mexico and the majority of the world, you don't do that. You put it in the waste basket. Now I know, a lot of you guys, oh my God, this is gross, this is disgusting, this is whatever, but 
Again, guys, get yourself a bidet if you feel so horrible about it, okay? Um, or whatever, okay? But again, I felt the same way, and about a week later, after, after the first week of me moving here and living here, I forgot, okay? That's just the way it is, all right? Um, but yeah, guys, all I gotta say is that that's a very important aspect of uh, living in Mexico and abroad is the fact that the, the plumbing system, and just like a lot of other things, are very different out here. You know, they're a lot smaller and they're a lot less, um, you know, capable of handling, you know, all kinds of things. So again, don't be dumping toilet paper down the toilet in Mexico or again, in most places. Ask your Airbnb or ask your host or ask the people as soon as you get there. But please remember that because otherwise the last thing you want is a toilet to be clogged. All right. Um, as soon as you get there. All right. So the next thing we're going to be talking about um, is uh, banking. Okay, again, guys, you know, this all depends on your situation, but banking um, is hit or miss depending on who you are. Um, if you have, uh, you know, really good credit, really good banks, you know, you're, you're good on the financial scale, you ain't got no problem, all right? You already know, all right? American Express accepted everywhere type of shit. But if you're on the lower end of the financial totem pole, Banking could be a bit difficult. Banking could be a challenge, but um, there are ways around it. You know what I mean? You do not need to use your American bank account out here. In fact, it is encouraged for you to use cash. Mexico is a very cash friendly place. In fact, 85 to 90% of all transactions are done in cash. So what I would do with that, if I were you, is just talk to your local, I mean, talk to your bank or, you know, or financial institution before coming to Mexico, let them know that you're gonna be out here. And then once you're out here, Basically, just you know, go to the ATM. You know, find the best, most favorable um, exchange rate and at, at the most. Uh, you know, what I mean, uh, you know, at the best price. You know, meaning get try to get the best exchange rate and then the less fees. Okay, so that way you get your most bang for your buck and you get the closest. Um, you know, amount to the actual exchange rate at the moment, and then just keep those pesos, okay? And then just go and peso everything around. Now, there are certain things out here that function on your card, okay? Not everything, okay? So you might be able to go to Walmart, Costco, and certain places like that, Best Buy, and you might be able to slice your, you know, uh, what is it, slide your, uh, your Visa, your MasterCard, no problem. Again, always consult with your bank and let them know you're gonna be out here, number one. You know that, all right? Um, but anyways, you should be able to slide, no problem. But if you're going to a Mexican uh, Soriana, which is a grocery store, or Chedraui, which is a grocery store, they might or might not accept it, okay? Um, and again, the lower on the rung, you know what I mean, that the less corporatized that they are, you know what I mean, and the more um, home business that they are, the less you're probably gonna be able to get um, to use your card. So again, cash. Cash is king. You can use cash everywhere. In fact, if you're going to buy big appliances or bigger items, if you use cash, you actually get a discount. So, you know, again, these are all things to keep in mind, all right? Um, cash is king out here, so make sure that you have plenty of cash and do not rely on your cards. So, again, if you are someone that is uh, financially handicapped like I was, okay, at one time, um, you can come out here no problem, okay? In fact, you know, something like uh, Bitcoin is something that actually saved my life and helped me, you know, survive out here and survive and thrive in many places. But we're not gonna be talking about that, that here. We talk about that on the other channel, which by the way, I got a video that I dropped today talking about that particular subject, so check it out. But anywho, banking is something that needs to be taken care of. Don't be expecting to just come out here, all right, and just pretend like you're in another state and you're, you'll be able to use your card and everything is all very uh, card and debit, you know, debit card and credit card friendly. It's not, and not in every place, okay? So cash is king to make sure that you're able to come out here and get your cash, okay? And again, another, you know, uh, uh, one thing that a lot of people can use out there is MoneyGram. Again, if you can't find the proper bank or the proper place, um, you know, uh, what is it like, um, you know, the proper bank or the proper financial institution that will give you the good rate and the good, uh, uh, you know, they're not gonna charge you too much to do this transaction. If you can't find that, you can always use MoneyGram. I don't use Western Union. Western Union is not that good. Again, I made episodes on this, but MoneyGram is great. You can literally send money to yourself, or if you're out here with somebody, send money to them and vice versa, and then you just go to Walmart and you get your money there. Or Banco Azteca, which they're everywhere. Or Electra, which they're everywhere. So again, you can you know MoneyGram money to yourself and you get the, literally only a few cents off the exchange rate and they charge you around 10 bucks, give or take. And again, you know, with ATM fees and all these other stuff, it's around 
the same thing. Um, and you can send money to yourself or send money to a friend or family member that's with you or what have you. And that, that to me is one of the best ways, okay, is uh, to do something like that, okay, just quick cash transfers. But again, everyone's different. The, the better you are financially, the better you're gonna be dealing with that out here. But even if you have a horrible situation, like again, a lot of people that come from the US that don't even have a bank account, you can survive out here. Capiche, okay? So, and again, it takes a little bit of work, but you can definitely do it out here where it's a lot of, it's a lot harder in the US. But again, out here, um, you know, you can link up your card, you can link up your bank to things like Uber um, and so on and so forth. And you, you know, again, when I Uber, I, you can pay in cash. That's cool, right? You can pay Uber in cash or, which is what I did for a very long time, or now I pay with my card. You know, I just got my card linked up to there and boom, 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 PayPal, stuff like that. And so again, you know, corporations, the bigger corporations, they're more than happy to accept your digital payment, okay? But the smaller the, the place, the more they want that cash, all right? In fact, you know, they'll be biting the coin if you pay with silver and shit out here, you know, which, anyways, okay. So another, we can talk about that in another episode, um, but, Again, we can all these things. I'm just quickly, you know, kind of answering questions and kind of quickly going through so that you guys can again leave a lot in the comments. I want you guys to ask me more in the comments about these topics that we're talking about, and then also ask me about other things that you want me to talk about. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of these topics more in depth if if I haven't already done so on my uh, on my channel. So please check out my channel for some of these topics more in depth. And if not, I'm going to be making future episodes uh, to cover these even further. Okay. Um, another thing, drugs. People ask me that all the fucking time. So can I get drugs out here? And by the way, I'm talking about you know, medicine, like actually, I'm talking about all drugs, okay, by the way, but um, let's cover the spectrum of drugs real quick. A lot of people, you know what I mean, ask me about the drug situation. Again, if you're talking about Mexico in particular, it's not a problem out here, okay, seriously, come on. If you can get drugs in the US and anywhere else, um, you know, where it's totally legal, um, you can get them out here too. Now, actually, out here, they're a little bit more legal, even though they're all illegal, but they're not. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go through the drugs, okay? Again, if you just, come out here and you want recreational type drugs, all you gotta do is ask around, okay? And uh, you shall receive, it's not a big fucking deal. It's, they're not, you know what I mean? Again, they're a major exporter to the US, so that's that. Now, when it comes to actual drugs, you know, meaning like, uh, you know, um, drugs for um, a medical condition, uh, drugs that you're gonna need for, you know, they are prescription drugs, you know, to help you with X, Y, Z, um, things like that. Yes, you're, you're gonna find them out here as well. Um, in fact, you're gonna find them out here so much cheaper, you're gonna fucking have, you're gonna faint and just see, when you see how cheap medicine is out here, okay? Um, and how cheap, uh, you know, doctors are out here and stuff like that. You can see a doctor from anywhere from five to $25, okay? For a real doctor, okay? And, um, and again, you can get your, litany of medications out here now yeah there's certain controlled substances and there's certain things like that that are a little bit harder to get but just like anything else if you can get them in the u.s you can get them out here if you can get them in europe and canada you can get them out here again for cheaper okay and yes they're the same exact quality or better quality in many cases like antibiotics all right so medicine of all sides of the spectrum you can get out here okay all kinds of medicine okay you just got to do a little digging a little asking and, and things like that. Sometimes as simple as asking your taxi driver or two or three or four until you find one, okay? Or, you know, if you know somebody out here and things like that, again, they're not really a big deal. And um, since everything is uh, more libertarian out here, um, you can be doing whatever the fuck you want within your the confines of your own, your own home and no one can ever bother you, okay? And even when you're outside, um, acting a fool, let's say you're drunk or you're uh, just acting a fool, again, you have to be so horrible and do things like, I don't know, punch a police officer in the face for you to get arrested, okay? Seriously. So it's not like the US, where in the US you just look at a cop the wrong way and you, you know, you're gone. Okay, out here, it's not even anywhere close to that, okay? So there's a big difference, okay? But again, you know, going back to this spectrum here of, uh, you know, medicine, you know, like we were talking about earlier, that once you start dealing with, um, you know, certain medicines that are a little bit on the recreational side, uh, that's when you're starting to stick your nose into trouble and that's when you could be, you know, um, on the wrong side of things, okay? Just because, uh, you know, when people are like, oh, is Mexico violent, like how we were talking about earlier, is Mexico safe? It's safe. 
But again, it depends on what you're doing out here, you know what I mean? If you're gonna get the, the drugs um, from the doctor, you're good. If you're gonna get the drugs, you know, from some guy that you met on the street, eh, you know, again, but it's up to you, all right? You're the one that determines your safety, all right? And things like that, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, whether you're gonna be riding your bike and then uh, if you chain your bike up, you, it's not gonna get stolen. If you leave your bike out and just hope that, oh my God, no one's gonna take it, someone's gonna take it. Again, just common sense, okay? Just like you would do back home, all right? Next topic. Um, can you drive to Merida in particular? But you know, a lot of people are like, can you drive through Mexico? Again, short answer, yes. You can definitely drive through Mexico. No problem, by the way, I'm running out of battery, so in case it's, you know. Um, yes, you can drive through Mexico. You can definitely drive through Mexico. And um, in fact, if you're gonna drive from the border all the way to the Yucatan Peninsula, which is where I am right now, it'll take you somewhere around the four days, give or take, okay? And it's very safe. The highways out here, in, in many cases, are better taken care of than the ones in the US. Enough said. But yeah, you can do that. I'm gonna make a whole video on this and, and talk about this topic even further in the future. But yeah, you can drive out here, you can drive through here, and so on and so forth. Now, you know, if you're in certain dangerous areas of Mexico and you go out into the boonies, same thing as in the US or any other part of the world, you know what I mean? That could be a little dangerous. And you go out to the boonies or you go out to South Chicago or you go out to the middle of Alabama, you know what I mean? And you're a certain color, and yeah, you know, certain things are gonna fucking happen. Same shit out here. But if you stick to the highways, you stick to the cities, you stick to the major, you know, metropolitan areas, which again, Mexico, that's another, you know, segue to the next thing, but Mexico is very huge, very diverse, very populated, very, again, once people come out here, they're very surprised that, holy shit, you know, Mexico's really developed, and this, this is like a first world country out here, so yeah, you're gonna be fine, you follow, and again, as long as you follow the roads, follow the signs, and to guide you to exactly where you need to go, and you'll be totally fine. Next topic. Dating. How is dating out here? Well, <clears throat> again, guys, if you guys can find uh, Uber and use, you know, other, sh you know, programs out there, you know, like Uber, Uber Eats, um, you know, PayPal, and I can go on. There's a huge list. Well, guess what? Tinder, Grinder, whatever the fuck you're into, also out here. Now, not everything, not every single one, but you know, they got, they, I'm sure they got their own dating apps and stuff like that. For me personally, you guys know my story. Tinder <clears throat> is all I used. And once you're down here, you're gonna notice that the women out here are completely different, and the men. The men and the women are completely different than what you're used to in your first world country. Especially if you're coming from a first world country, you're definitely gonna see, and what do I mean? The US, Canada, Europe, um, and uh, Australia, and places like that. Once you, when you come from those places and you come out here, you're like, holy shit. What a difference, you know what I mean? Wow, you know, very, very different. And um, people ask me, you know what I mean? Is it hard, is it difficult? It is not. In fact, it is more traditional. It is how it used to be, and it's actually very easy. In fact, you could be walking on the street and uh, you know get hit on whatever sex you're, you are, or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like uh, out here, it is totally acceptable. You know, again, just depending on where you are. There are certain parts, you know, like a Mexico City, where there it is kind of like the US and it is kind of like Europe and you know if you compliment the lady there you might get in trouble but 95% of Mexico um, if you compliment the lady out here that's a huge winner if you open the door if you do any of the old traditional things and vice versa you get what I'm saying you know with the women you know you're you're out here so out here women are women men are men and um, and those roles are you know very heavily um, and those sorry yeah, guys, again, back to the whole noise thing that we were talking about earlier and all that good stuff. Uh, forgot where I left off. But um, we're going to just barrel through this because I have a lot of things to do. In fact, I got to do my cooking live stream as soon as I'm done here. I got to still edit this video so I can upload it. I got a million things I still got to do. And um, we're in the middle of a freaking hurricane, Hurricane Zeta, that's, uh, you know, hitting us right now. But again, I don't stop. All right. So, um, but yeah, you know, back to the whole dating thing. Dating out here is great and it's wonderful and you are definitely gonna enjoy it and have an awesome experience. So let's talk about that for a second, okay? Might as well. So that's how you know when your delivery is here. So, you know how like right now, you know, most people are getting a lot of deliveries and deliveries and deliveries because of what's happening in 2020? Well, in a place like Mexico, which again, a lot of countries like Mexico, you know, like uh, um, they have a, a system already of delivery. They deliver all kinds of things out here. You know what I mean, they've always done it. And um, 
now more than ever, but anything. You can call the pharmacy, they deliver drugs. You can call any place, they'll deliver a part for your, you know what I mean, for your light bulb, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll deliver food, they'll deliver everything and anything, okay? And so that guy making noise is a guy delivering something. He could be delivering tortillas daily. He could be delivering bread and, and, and sweets. He could be delivering uh, something that you ordered. He could be whatever. Also, there's a lot of vendors that roll through the neighborhood all the time, selling everything from bread to um, household wares, you know, like, uh, like brooms and all kinds of shit. So there's all kinds of things like that, okay? So that's also part of the whole thing out here. But again, no, I just I wanted to like at least let you guys know about that so you guys knew what that was. So a lot of you guys don't. So back to what we were saying. So the whole dating thing out here, it is really good. It's actually great. And again, I apologize, you know, like hopefully I, I was able to record something there that made sense, okay? Because I, I forgot already just dealing with the noise and turning to settle. I'm working on, on setting up the, the studio over there for the thing. Um, okay, um, what else do we do? Okay, I think we've covered it. Oh yeah, Spanish. Do you need to learn Spanish? Now, yes and no, you know what I mean? Like basically, you kind of don't, I mean, you don't need Spanish. You can come out here and uh, not speak much Spanish, but man, you're gonna have a very, 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 very difficult time. If you know a little Spanish, it's gonna be easier. And the more Spanish you know, the easier it'll be. Now, this goes for any country, you know? No matter what country you're going to, it would be empirical, you know, what is it? It would be, uh, ideal for you to learn the language. So that's why some people out there that don't want to learn the language and they only want to speak English, there's a lot of other countries out there in Asia and in India, all over the world, that only speak English, you know what I mean? Shit, you can go to Jamaica for crying out loud, right? Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, most people want to go to other places that are very desirable, like Mexico, Mexico's great, and a lot of Latin America's great, but you need to learn Spanish. And so in a place like Merida or Mexico City, you know, again, there's a lot of people that speak English. All right, of various levels, all right? Um, but, you know what I mean, everyone speaks Spanish. And so it would be ideal for you to learn the language, okay? Not necessary, again, the closer you are to uh, the touristy areas, the less you need it, but again, learn some Spanish. Use your phone, Google Translate, you know, put a little effort into it. Use an app called Duolingo, look it up, Duo. Lingo, okay? Duolingo, that's the app, okay? Download that app, okay? And it will teach you the basics of any language um, for free on your phone. So you can learn a little bit, go through Google Translate and yada, 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 and bam, you can barrel your way through it. And if you spend enough time out here, the Spanish will come to you. You will, okay, um, learn it. And then I think the last thing is uh, we're gonna talk about the last thing we're going to talk about is the post office, okay? The post office, that is a major, major, major concern for many people. So look, let me just give you the quick rundown. If you're going to use any kind of mail service out here, mail service, a lot of people say, oh my God, the mail out here is terrible, the worst, and some people say it's great, it's wonderful. It's both, okay? So this is how it works. If you use the local Mexican mail service, it is the worst, the worst, the worst. You might, it's a 50-50 chance whether you get it or not. Now, if you use FedEx, DHL, UPS, um, Estafeta, I can go on and on, okay? If you use any other commercial, uh, private uh, shipping company, you're gonna have a 99.999% um, success rate, okay? Now, what's the problem? Okay, well, most people out there are used to using, you know, the regular post office of your country, and they're cheap and they're great. When you're using a uh, FedEx and you're using uh, you know any one of you know FedEx, UPS, um, all these other DHL, whatever, they're expensive as fuck. Okay, they're very very expensive, and since they're expensive, that's the problem. So extremely cheap for the Mexican uh, homegrown uh, company, very expensive for the private. So when you're dealing with that kind of stuff, you know, again, in the, in the United States, we have the United States Postal Service, which is super cheap and super great. Mexico does not have that. So if you send something to Mexico using the postal service, once it gets to Mexico, they'll give it to their postal service and then that's it, that's where it gets lost or it'll take two months to get here, no matter if you overnight that shit, okay? Now, if you fucking use FedEx, UPS, DHL, anything like that, I mean, I've gotten things in a couple days, okay? No problem, very quickly, all right? So, that's the thing. Now, guess what, you know what I mean? You, you, instead of paying $20 for to send the box to Mexico, um, you're gonna be paying $100, or maybe more. Plus, you know, you're gonna be dealing with certain 
taxes and certain import um, yeah, taxes, you know, on, depending on what you send. If you're sending something like camera equipment, um, a microphone, anything that, a, a telephone, anything that's new, a scene, like a cell phone, a computer, you're gonna get taxed to the, to the max, okay? And something that costs you $1,000 might cost you $1,300 to send. What? So a lot of people, what they do is they act as mules. So let's say like I got friends in, in the United States, well, when next time they come, um, if I want a brand new computer and a brand new cell phone, I'll just tell them, hey, I'm gonna ship that to your house so that when it gets there, you can open it, say it's yours and bring it across and then I can you know, have my uh, laptop, my new laptop, my new phone, and I don't have to pay all those taxes in between. Now, the downside to that is that it's not necessarily new. Your friend opened already your box and you don't get to have the new unboxing thing. If you want the unboxing, it's gonna cost you money. But that's a way that a lot of people you know, um, send and receive things out here. And that's another topic on its own, another video on its own, and I won't be talking about it, but at least I gave you the quick overview for shipping, okay? And, um, and some of the taxes and some of the fucking duty fees and all that shit that you gotta pay, which is incredibly, insane okay and mexico next needs to fix that shit or you know anyways but um i think that's it guys i think i covered a multitude of topics today i don't know how many topics i covered i don't know how much i talked but i know that i talked a lot and i'm gonna keep talking for a few more minutes <laughs> the guys I just did a major update on my website please check it out um i literally added you know more resources for you guys to check out free resources on moving to Mexico, moving to many of Mexico in particular. I got a bunch of free resources. I got, I got a bunch of links, you know, links to all of my websites. I mean, sorry, links to all of my, uh, you know, channels. I got four channels on YouTube. I do a podcast. I do all kinds of uh, content, uh, you know, on, you know what I mean? For, you know, I do a cooking live stream and cook, you know, I cook in live. Okay, for you guys, right? In fact, let me, I'm gonna probably show you a little bit of all this in the background, but um, check it all out. All the links are down below. If that's too much for you, just go to joseadiaga.com, all right? And you have everything there. Again, free Medina Mexico information and links and resources. Um, we have, um, you can watch the live stream from there. You got all my videos there. You got all the links to everything I do there. You got the podcast, you got the store. I sell merchandise and I can go on and on and on, all right? So please check out the website and that's it. I'm not gonna bother you with anything else. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, you already know what to do. Please like, please hit the bell icon so you don't miss any more of these videos or any more of this content. Subscribe if you haven't already and uh, more important than anything else, you already know, stay awesome. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode because uh, I know it was fun for me to make. Hells yeah. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys. I love this green screen too. I get to dance out here. I get to do this thing here. Act a fool. Act more fool.